Hey, welcome to Bear Mountain. We're doing a video today about how we're trying to improve our no-till processes. And a couple of the goals that we're going after on the, our no-till processes is try to cut down on purchased inputs and use what the farm has an abundance of. Our farm is in grass seed country, so we have a lot of extra, well, grass straw, most of it from our own place. And that's kind of what we're focusing on because our own place doesn't have any chemical residues or things of that nature. So I know a lot of people say, well, when you use hay, straw, you get seeds and everything like that. But part of what we're doing on our rotation is kind of this. We are, when we're rotating out in late summer, early fall, we're rotating into a cover crop. And one of the problems that we've had in the past that many people have had with cover crops is the next spring how to deal with it without using tillage. Well that's where Brian O'Hara Tobacco Road Farm followed his inspiration on this by using solarization which we tested out in earlier earlier videos. You can check those out. We're going to incorporate that into taking our winter cover crop out in spring and then move into planting. But the second thing that we've noticed is we've used a lot of urban composts in the past and that ultimately is pretty woody. It's a great mulch, but it's not really a fertility thing. And so what we're doing is with using the cover crop as a straw mulch and planting directly into it after we killed it back, that's going to enable us to do the weed suppression. Let me give you an example of what a solarized bed with some hay straw and a very light hay straw mulch looks like. Um, this is our last crop of uh, sunflowers. So let's take a look at that. These sunflowers are planted into a, well, what is a really thin mulch of hay straw. What we did to prepare the bed is this was cropped out of actually a sunflower crop before it. And what we did is we came in and uh, cut all of the sunflower stumps to the ground, left the residue on top of the soil, covered it with about a half inch of hay, wetted it down thoroughly for about a couple of days, and then solarized it for, uh, I think it was approximately three days. That killed off any of the weed seeds that were in the hay, or it seemed to, because we have had very little grass or anything like that sprouting in it. After we pulled the plastic back, we then planted sunflowers into it. These guys have been in the ground now for, this is I think we're starting our third week. So these guys are slated to be uh, last harvest, which is gonna be right around the end of October. Um, the only fertilization we did to it was a worm compost tea, um, pretty weak. And then we've used um, a few of the K and F solutions I think we've had two applications of, um, of that with their basic maintenance solution. So, so far what we've seen is no real insect damage, no real slug damage. The solarization took the slugs out. Moisture level has been kept really good. We've hardly had to water them, even though up until the last couple of days we've had very warm, dry weather. And then secondly, the soil temperature right near the surface is about 70 degrees and about three to four inches down, it drops down to about 65 degrees. So the soil is still keeping a good level of warmth in it, even on overcast days. And so far, these guys are looking like they're growing pretty good. Now let's flip over and take a look at another area, which we just took out of sunflowers and we're going to put into the winter cover crop. Okay, this area here is had sunflowers on it, and we cut them off to the ground. And then what we did is we raked any excess residue, um, pieces of sunflower stem or something, you know, that might not have uh, broken down. Uh, and we've raked that off to the side of the bed. Then what we did is we used a mixture of five different types of cover crop seed. We have crimson clover, some uh, field pea, um, some mustard, some daikon, uh, annual rye, cereal rye. So I guess we actually have quite a few in there. Anyway, this is just a mixture 
um, that we've seeded down and then we took a regular bow rake and just kind of scratched the surface. The surface is not tilled, although it kind of looks like it is. It's really not. Um, it's, it's pretty loose and it's got a bit of a mulch from uh, previous applications on it, but not that much. The ground's pretty firm. We've had about three days of rain off and on, and uh, so we have a lot of moisture in the soil. So at this point, soil's warm, we've got moisture, we put in the cover crop. So this shows a little bit more of a close-up of the area. There are some seeds in here. Uh, we basically raked it out, and uh, it's got a lot of moisture in it, a lot of cover crop seed on it. And when we put the straw down and wet it down, see there's a seed right there, um, we'll um, hopefully get a really good stand coverage similar to like we show, showed over in the buckwheat, hopefully a little thicker. And so what we got to do is just take a little bit of straw, very light. All I'm doing is just making sure I got about somewhere between a quarter to a half inch down. And I'm just going around and doing that. The whole point on this is to add a little bit of organic material to cover the seed and to help retain moisture so that in fall this time of year in western oregon you'll get these periods of cool wet and it'll be followed by fairly warm i mean not super hot but warm enough where things will dry out a bit so the idea is we'll get a better establishment of the stand by retaining more moisture in the soil This light covering should help give some protection to the seed we just scratched into the surface and allow a pretty good germination. Once that's germinated, this straw that's laying on top, the hay straw, will, mo will most likely decompose over the, the course of the winter. And so what we're going to be left with would be hopefully a really good stand of uh, green manure. Then in the spring, this bed We'll need probably uh, sometime in mid-April. So what we'll do is we'll take it down early, probably either come in with a scythe or something of that nature, and then um, either use a black tarp for a couple of weeks on it, depending on you know how the temperatures are, or we'll solarize it. I'm personally thinking I'd like to move it to the point where we solarize it. I think we could be able to do that by late April. That would basically kill the cover crop off and we would be left with a mulch on top. And then that we would plant into with whatever is on the next schedule to be put on. So that's kind of the basics behind it. So this is, once I put the straw down and just kind of, you know, put the drip irrigation lines on top of it so I know where they are, um, this bed's pretty much done. I'll, if it doesn't rain tonight, I'll probably wet it in, um, give it a little water tomorrow, but ultimately just kind of let it go and do its thing over the winter. Let's take a look at a late summer buckwheat cover crop using the same technique we're trying out. Okay, what we're looking at here is the same technique I was just describing, except this was a crop out of some midsummer um, annuals that finished by pretty much the middle of August. And what we did is we cut them off to the ground level. We didn't apply any compost. Um, what we did at that point then was, after cutting it off, any of the heavy duty residue we raked off and just uh, put under the black tarps here in the pathways to rot. And then we overseeded the top with buckwheat. And what I'm learning from this is I probably should have used a heavier seeding to get a better establishment. This buckwheat is uh, two weeks since I planted it, but um, it's going to be late and it's only going to go till probably the end of September. And then we'll take it down with either a, a black tarp and, and or we'll solarize it for a couple of days. The whole, we'd prefer to solarize it because what we'd like to do is to plant into the buckwheat straw our um, overwintering our biannual sweet william. This should, if we, and particularly if we're solarizing, it should knock down any weeds that are in here too. By the way, after we cut off all the, the material, we did solarize the bed for two days. So we wetted it down good, solarized it, 
before we planted the buckwheat. Then planted the buckwheat and put a very light straw mulch over it. As you can see, it's not very thick at all, and it's already really starting to decompose pretty fast now that we've had uh, some rains on it. It's amazing how the biology just starts taking off. So you can see a nice light green carpet going down the row, and uh, this should form a pretty thick, um, hopefully a nice straw when we uh, get finished and ready to take this out. Well, just to wrap this video up, this is about seven, I think the eighth day after we sowed the winter cover crop over where the sunflowers were. And uh, the first thing that came up really rapidly were all the brassicas. You can see the mustards and uh, some daikons in here, the telltale little look of the plant. Also too, the cereal rye is now up and we have small thin wisps of um, Oregon annual ryegrass in here as well. So far we haven't seen the uh, Austrian field peas yet, but they should be coming along shortly. And anyway, the experiment appears to be a success at this time. Very little loss to insects, bugs, or birds. And I think this is going to fill out really well. Thanks for joining us today. This is a new technique we're trying out. I think it's going to work out pretty well with a quarter to a half inch of uh, straw hay over the top just to act as a nursing mulch to get the cover crop established. It's all looking good. Um, be sure to check out our other videos and our playlists. We have all kinds of different topics out there. And subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And I want to thank you for uh, watching today and hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.